Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? I'm recording this at home. I don't have to do it from the road again. That's probably going to change in a couple of days. Who knows? Um, and I'm glad we are on the psalm we are on. I've been waiting for this one to come up after everything we've been talking about. Taking it to the Lord. Cast it on the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Psalm 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. The whole verse says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be booed. I've been waiting for this to come up. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Start right here in verse 16. As for me, I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon God. I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and noon, I will pray. There's your example of prayer. Evening, morning, and noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them. Even he who abides from of old, Selah. Because they do not change, they therefore they do not fear God. He has put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved, but you, O God, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half of their days, but I will trust in you. Amazing. And oh, stupid dog. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear Osito. He heard something, so he's going off. Oh, I know what it is because I can hear him now. So, quick story. You guys know what I've been going through. My my dad's not been feeling good. I'm watching out for him. My mom just got out of the hospital. She's on oxygen now, COPD. My mother-in-law's here in my house on hospice. My neighbors, her mom has dementia and they found her. And I'm not going to put too much information out, but they found her walking down the road at midnight talking crazy stuff and so they have her at her house while her little dog is over there and he's yapping up a storm he's a little 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 yapper and so now osito and angus and athena are going off at him because he's yapping <clears throat> it's funny when they start doing this if you listen for a second you can hear him and it's like okay well that's why they're doing that needless to say our house has gotten very noisy again oh well we'll work with what we got because I'm going to cast my burden on the Lord. I'm not going to worry about it. And I was even talking to my wife the other day about this. You know, I'm in a place now, and, and my dad too. I'm in a place now where I'm not worried about these things. These are parts of things that are part of life. It's stuff that's going to happen. I'm not concerned with it. I'll do what I can do when I can do it. The Lord will make me able in every situation. The Lord is going to take any burden that I have because I'm going to cast it to him. Lay it at his feet. Lord... You tell me what to do with this. You deal with this. You help me with this. You control this. You bless this. You save this. Your will is perfect concerning these things. You know the right way, the right time to deal with these. I don't. Why should I stress over things I have to deal with when I can go to the Lord with them? That's why I love that we're in Psalm 55, 22. All this that is happening. See, you've got to get your head in the right place. Hold on a second. Osito, hush. Hush. Goofy dog. <coughs> He's a weird mix of dogs. Jack Russell, Beagle, some other stuff. Makes him bark a lot. Okay. There. Muffle that down. Okay. So this is why I'm glad we're at Psalm 55. I mean, you're getting a, an example right now of a bunch of little things happening. We all have households that are like this. And we take these things to the Lord when we're overwhelmed with them. We go to the Lord. Lord, I'm really overwhelmed with this and I don't know how to respond to it. Sometimes 
The best answer he can give isn't a solution to the problem, but it's peace concerning the issue. And I found myself personally in a great level of peace concerning all the things that are happening. Because what normally happens back before I was saved, even back just 10 years ago, when things like this would come, I would be completely swamped and overwhelmed and would be aggravated and frustrated and angry because I didn't know what to do. And I took it out on others. I'm not like that anymore. I don't want to be like that anymore. This stuff comes piling in. Lord, I know you know the perfect way to do it. I'm going to put my trust in you. I'm not going to worry about these things. I'll do what I can when I can. Everybody else, if they, if I can't help them, I tell them no. I'm not being a jerk, just being as a matter of fact as possible. The ones I can do for, I'll tell them yes, and I'll move on. But I'm not going to let it wear me down. I'm not going to let it stress me out. I'm not going to let it cause me to fall apart when I have a Lord that sustains me, that upholds me. Psalm 55, 22. Care, even though exercised upon legitimate objects, if carried to excess, has in it the nature of sin. Amazing that that's how this devotion starts. Care, meaning we care for others or other things. It can become sin. Especially if we allow it to come in between us and our Lord. The precept to avoid anxious care, that's the key part, is the anxiety, is earnestly inculcated by our Savior again and again. It is reiterated by the apostles. And it is one which cannot be neglected without involving transgression. For the very essence of anxious care is the image, um, imagining that we are wiser than God. Folks, listen very closely to what he's saying here. And the thrusting ourselves into his place to do for him that which he has undertaken to do for us. Sometimes we inject ourselves, and I have been horribly guilty of this, we inject ourselves into situations that we have no business getting involved in. I am horribly bad at this. And I constantly ask the Lord, Lord, when, if I ever get in your way, push me away so I can't. There have been times he's given me a, a minor illness to make sure that I'm out of a situation. Because he's working in that situation. There's no reason for me to be there. We attempt to think of that which we fancy he will forget. We labor to take upon ourselves our weary burden as if we were unable or unwilling to take, or he were unable or unwilling to take it for us. That's not true. He said he would do it. Why do we constantly wear ourselves out concerning that? Now this, you have to, and I'm just speaking from my personal experience here. You have to come to a place of indifference to a certain degree, basically stoicism, to a certain degree. You don't want to be completely indifferent to anybody's feelings or the situation because you may be the catalyst fixing the situation or at least sustaining it. You may be the vessel with which the Lord uses to deal with that situation. So you don't want to be totally indifferent that you just walk away and don't care about anybody. But there has to come a level of, of keeping yourself out of it. I, I have to do this. I have to do that because they pertain to whatever. But I don't have to be emotionally involved in this. A lot of people get very emotionally involved and it wears them out. I don't have that much energy. I'll give it when I feel the necessary. I'll give it when it is necessary. But most of the time, I'm just doing what needs to be done. A lot of people say that's very insensitive. Well, how much emotion are you willing to invest in a situation that technically has nothing to do with you to the point that it exhausts you, wears you out, and then you have negative feelings toward the person or people involved in the situation? Pull back a little. Let the Lord work. Sometimes we're standing right in front of him in the way while he's trying to do something in the situation. When we need to just step back and just watch, and all of a sudden, he does something. And it's like, whoa. What I do in a lot of cases is I offer, is there anything you need? Can I go get something for you? Can I do something for you? No, I'm okay. Okay. Because I've been in the past, I've been horrible about following those people around. 
You sure it's not nothing I can do for you? You sure it's not? And, and they get tired of it. And like, yeah, would you go do this just to get me to get away from them? Well, I don't do that anymore. The best that I can. They know I'm here. If they need me, they'll call on me. They don't, they don't. There's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing I can do about that. And so I got tired of wearing myself out, watching people suffer, knowing I have the solution and can help them with this, realizing that maybe that's not what's needed. Maybe they need to learn the lesson the hard way. And so what I need to do is pull back a little bit. Just watch. Let the Lord deal with it. Lord, you show me what to do, and then I'll do it. Now, this disobedience to his plain precept, this unbelief in his word, this presumption in intruding upon his providence is all sinful. Now, we have become the sin because we have gotten in between God and what he was doing. When we let something else get in between God and what he's doing, or God and us, that's sin. Sometimes we become the sin because we get in the way. And there's no reason for us to. Yet more than this, anxious care often leads to acts of sin. He who cannot calmly leave his affairs in God's hands, but will carry his own burden, is very likely to be tempted to use wrong means to help himself. We know what that is, don't we? Alcohol, drugs, other forms of sin like sexual sin. Food, a lot of people use food as a crutch today. It's real easy to get caught up in this. This is where faith in the Lord comes from. I don't need those things. I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing. I'm going to put it in his hands. I'm going to wait. And when it's time to move, he'll let me know. This sin leads to a forsaking of God as our counselor. Go to the Lord. We talked about this just in the last couple of days. Go to the Lord and ask him, Lord, what should I do? And resorting instead to human wisdom. We go to somebody we know and love and say, what do you think I should do? What should we do? How should we handle this? I already know what to do. And, and it took me a long time to realize, I already know what to do. I'm just going to go do it. This is going to be the broken cistern instead of to the fountain. A sin which was laid against Israel of old. Anxiety makes us doubt God's loving kindness. That's the truth. That happens a lot. And thus our love to him grows cold. We feel mistrust and thus grieve the spirit of God so that our prayers become hindered by us, not by him. Our consistent example marred and our life one of self-seeking. Does this sound familiar to anybody? I've read some of y'all's comments recently, and it sounds like some of y'all may be coming to almost the same conclusion. I came to it too. We, we all do. The Lord is changing us. He's leading us out of these things. He's standing there looking at us while we're dealing with the, the, why are you getting yourself so concerned with this? It may even be in your own house. Why are you so concerned with this? You didn't put that person in that situation. Why are you getting in the way? When you need to step back and just let things happen the way they happen. Let me work. And I'm, I'm sure if he was here, that's what he would say. He'd put his back of his hand on our shoulder and he'd push us back and say, step back. You don't have to wear yourself out to this. I'm dealing with this. Just watch. And a lot of times we need to learn to do that. Instead of trying to comfort ourselves or go to others for comfort, we need to go to God. Thus, want of confidence in God leads us to wander far from him. But if through a simple faith, remember what we talked about yesterday? Simple, keep it simple, stupid. Simple faith in his promise. We cast each burden as it comes upon him and are careful for nothing. You starting to understand why that, what that means now? We all got to go through this. I, did, I, I have two and I'm still doing it. Careful for nothing, because he undertakes to care for us. It will keep us close to him and strengthen us against much temptation. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And this is where the perfect peace comes from. A lot of people may say, how can you be so insensitive or so indifferent to the situation? I'm not. I'm at peace. I'm at peace. I was talking to my dad a few days ago and I, I, I gave all the glory to the Lord 
but we were talking about, he goes, I'm sure I'm glad you got the energy to do all this stuff. His air conditioner isn't working because, and if you know anything about mechanics, on his little truck on the AC compressor, the pulley, it was a poor design um, because it was it was uh, pressure welded or heat welded um, in 12 different spots holding the pulley onto the hub for the air conditioner. It made a lot of racket, basically. It was rattling around because it was broken loose. It really was a poor design, and it didn't look to me like the machine was set at the right voltage because it didn't have enough of a penetrating weld to hold it together properly. So I went to the junkyard, and I found him another one. That's what I was doing yesterday. I went on a vehicle, and it was amazing, too, because I was like, Lord, please help me find one, and that it's easy to get to so I don't have to be out here forever. Walked up to the end of the row, found one laying there. Somebody had pulled everything out of the engine bay, and the whole top of the motor was gone, and the AC compressor, still connected to the lines, was sitting right on top of the engine block, free and open. I got set it wherever I wanted to, pulled everything off, simple. Got exactly what we were looking for. Super easy. Didn't have to take nothing apart at all except for the part, take the part off I needed. So amazing. The Lord's hand, hand was working and then I can get out of the heat. So my dad said, I sure am glad you got the energy for this. And I said, you know, I'll tell you something. I have been on a long stretch. You guys know how much pain I'm in all the time. I told them I have been on a long stretch of not hardly having any pain. And I have to, and I, this is what I told him, and I have to give God the glory. I have to glorify the Lord on this because it is only because he's, because he's preparing me and making me able to do these things. I've had the energy, I've had the motivation, I've had the drive and the desire to do these things because I asked him, Lord, whatever needs to be done, I'm willing, but I need you to make me able. And he has done that. And not only has he done that, he's given me peace in my heart over all these things. I can't, I can't make my mother-in-law more comfortable than what I am now? Why am I going to stress over it? I can't make somebody call me when they need help like my mother. She's got the, uh, and, and she'll hate it if I say it, but she's got a horrible habit about this. She will not call and ask for help. She won't do it because she thinks she's burdening everybody. No, you're not. I can't make her do it. Why am I going to stress over it? If she wants to suffer, she'll suffer. It is what it is. I can't make my dad do any of those things. Why am I going to stress over it if they're choosing to do that? And I can't make them do the right thing. I can't make them call on me. I can't make them go the right place. You know, I can't make them do any of the things they want to do. My dad probably should be going to the hospital. He doesn't want to go. Um, I can't make him do it. And again, people will say, well, that's very insensitive of you. But is it? Because we just read in the devotion about this anxious care. Why am I going to be stressed about what I'm trying to do for others? They know where I am. They know what I can do. They know that I'm willing to do it. It's up to them to call. It's up to them to ask. Now, flip this, flip the record over, and you have people that are trying to take too much of your time. Well, there comes a point where there's a limit. Hey, I've got to go do this, and I've got to go do that. I've got all this other stuff already going on. I can't take on anything else. So you're going to have to wait. And they'll get mad at you for that. I've had that happen many times. You can't do it perfect. You can't say it perfect. You can't be perfect to anyone around you. You will never, the, the, the drink will never be cold enough. The dinner will never be hot enough. The AC will never be comfortable enough. <clears throat> the bed won't be just right. You're never, ever going to be able to do it the right way. You've got to realize that. You're never going to make everybody happy. It's impossible. Only do what the Lord has given you to do. Only do what you can do. Cast all those burdens on him and he will do take care of those things. He will deal with those things. Don't take any more on you than what has been allotted to you. And it, the world may see this as indifference, a lack of love. If I'm here and I'm holding my hand out, offering help, and the person that needs the help refuses to take my hand, why am I going to be stressed about their lack of decision making? I see you suffering. Here's my hand of help. I see you struggling. And and they'll look at you and they'll say, but, but 
you've got all this going on. You, you're holding on to other stuff in your other hand. But this hand is free for you. All you have to do is take it. No, but but this is happening, and that's and I got this and all this and this stuff in here, and and then and then they hold stuff back or they mask stuff and not, not to tell you, for whatever reason they do that, and they don't take your hand, and then they fall. It's sad that that happened, but why is that my problem? Why is it my fault? Why should I take any blame onto myself for something I had no control over? What does the Lord say? If you can't add one cubit to your stature, if you can't add one hour to your life, why do you worry about anything else? Cast your cares upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ because he created all things. He is more than able to carry every single burden that there is at any time. He sees more than we see. He knows more than we know. He has the perfect solution for every single problem. The perfect timing to enact that solution. Why do we constantly struggle with things that we can't affect positively? Cast your cares upon him and he will give you perfect peace. I'm in that state now and growing in that state. And I now realize that. It's not a difference. It's not a lack of feeling. I love these people. I care for them. But I can't I can't do everything because they won't let me do anything. I'm not going to be sad or upset. They may be watching this and may take offense at this. I can't make anything happen. Certain people have to make certain choices. Now, this isn't just in, in your local area or in your local group. This can be anywhere. Somebody on the side of the road, a woman, got kids in the car, flat tire. Man, you tap on the window, of course, because of the way society is, they're terrified. Because anybody that walks up to the car, yet they don't know what to do. They're sitting there with their phone in their hand, not making phone calls. Won't get out and change the tire because nobody's willing to learn anything nowadays. Ma'am, would you like me to change your tire for you? You don't even have to get out of the car. Just pop the trunk and I'll do everything for you and I'll put it all back and then you can be on your way. Well, I really don't feel comfortable you getting in my trunk. Well, Ma'am, you're on the side of the road hanging over the edge of the embankment into a small ditch here. If your car slides, you're going to be stuck. You're going to have a tow truck come get you, and they're going to make you all get out in the heat. I can change your tire now, and you don't even have to get out of the car. Just keep everybody still, and then you can, you can move on. I had that experience happen and it was two times, two different times in my life and one went one way and one went the other. Well, the, the one I, I said, you don't have to get out of the car, just pop the trunk. Yeah, but can't you get through the seat to get it to my kids? I was like, but I'm just trying to change your tire. I'm not trying to get to your kids. That's it. I just want to change the tire so that you can get out of the road because there's no shoulder here. You, you're going to get hit by somebody or you're going to slide off. Because the kids are jumping, are you going to slide off into the ditch and then a tow truck has to come get you? I'm trying to help you avoid that. She could not get her head wrapped around the fact that somebody was actually trying to help her. So, okay, ma'am. I walked away. And I heard her holler. I got my truck and I left. You call somebody and have them come get you. If you're that unwilling, I can't help you. People will say, oh, I, that, that, was so, that was so unloving of you. No, it wasn't. She chose to be in that situation because she just as easily could have just opened the trunk and let me change the tire. Now, a bunch of years later, same scenario. Two kids in the back seat, woman in the front, windows rolled up. Same kind of road, exactly the same kind of road, literally hanging over the edge. Now, I knew how to jack the vehicle up in order to allow me to do what needed to be done. Walked up, I pulled up behind her, put my flashers on. I had a four-wheel drive, so I pulled in the ditch. Put my flashers on, got out, walked over, and tapped on the window. She jumps. She has her phone in her hand. Ma'am, would you like me to change your tire for you? Oh, I don't know. I was like, all you have to do is open the trunk. You guys don't even have to get out. Just keep the kids from jumping around. I'll take care of everything, and then you'll be on your way. Because right now, your car's kind of hanging over the edge, and if it slides in, you're going to have to have a tow truck come pull you out. I mean, I can pull you out, too, but... This is a narrow road with a lot of traffic. We, you know, school's about to let out, so. 
okay, because I don't even know who to call. She popped the trunk. I went to work. She actually got out of the car and walked around and watched. Got the tire changed, put everything together, put everything back in the vehicle. I said, okay. She's out of the car. She actually got over herself and got out of the car. I said, okay. I said, so you're set and you should be able to drive straight out. I said, here for future reference, flip your driver's license over and on the back is a number you can call for roadside assistance. I said, on your car insurance, for $1 a month, you can add AAA and they will come and do this for you and you don't even have to wait on anybody anymore. That's just for future reference. It's so nice meeting people that are willing to help and stuff like that. You know, you hear all these horror stories. I was like, well, I'm not one of those people. I'm here just here to help. You needed help and I'm here to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. She wouldn't get more than 10 feet. She stayed 10 feet away from me at all times, but she was very appreciative. She realized, okay, I can trust somebody. Sent her on her way. Never saw her again. Those two people held on to their stress and anxiety over situations to the point that they weren't able to help themselves and refused to help themselves, whether it was by taking an offer from someone else or flipping their driver's license over and calling the number on the back for roadside assistance or checking with their insurance and adding AAA for a dollar a month, sometimes two dollars. Everyone in my family has AAA. I've used it a bunch of times. Comes in pretty handy. Used the used it to tow my truck that broke the flywheel down here, or the transmission went out down here at the four way, and use it again in San Antonio. And the guy brought me all the way home from South South Four Ten in San Antonio. Amazing. Amazing. Cast your burdens on the Lord. Because if you're that woman sitting in that front seat, not knowing who to call, not able to get a hold of anybody that can come help you or people are at work and nobody's there to come and help you, anybody you know and trust, the Lord will send somebody to help you that you can trust. Cast your burdens upon the Lord when you have household or people around you that know they can call on you for help but won't do it. And, and don't let it frustrate you. Cast your burden on the Lord. Cast your burden on the Lord when you have too many things going on. And, and it's it seems to be overwhelming. And you don't want to be overwhelmed. Though the problem may exist, cast your burden on the Lord. Lay it all at his feet. Take any of these problems. Normal everyday life things, spiritual things, whatever it is. Take it to the Lord and cast your burden upon him. Watch what happens. Ask Christina Akers. We just we just helped them with a problem. Pretty major issue, according to her comments. They had a lot going on. But they were making it happen with what they could. And I know she probably wasn't going to ask, but I was like, if you have any kind of links, we can send you some money. The brothers and sisters are here to help you. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I sensed a hesitation in her. And then she did it. And everything changed. She put her burden in the Lord's hands. She told, she said that in a, in her in her comment. She put her burden in the Lord's hands. The Lord took care of it by using us. Amazing. Somebody here, oh gosh, three three years ago, I think three years ago, a little over three years ago, almost four, four years ago maybe. Sister in Christ, same thing. Enough money came in to completely change their life. Completely. Cast your burden upon the Lord. Watch what he does. I can go on and on because there's so many scenarios that can come up in so many situations I've had personally. And you guys can comment yours too. We have all got them. Cast your burden upon the Lord. Don't take this stress anymore because you're a child of God. Why should you stress about anything? You're a child of the Most High. You're a brother of to Christ himself, why should you be burdened with anything when you have the God of all things on your side? Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. 
Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. This devotion, perfect. This verse, perfect. I've been waiting for one of these verses to come up and here it is. What an, what an amazing scenario to have this come up so that we can talk about these issues. Why don't we bring our burdens to you? Even if we're in the midst of actively doing something with someone, why don't we bring that burden to you? Why don't we lay that burden at your feet? I can be in the middle of doing something for someone and bring that burden to you and perfect peace will befall us. Joy and a desire to help will befall us. The energy and the abilities that we need will be given to us if we would but come to you and rely on you. Father, may we never let anything in this life come in between us and you ever again. Whether it be people, it be things, or it be actions, whatever it is. May we look to you for all things, Lord Jesus. May we lay it all at your feet, cast all our burdens all upon you. In this situation here, this has been my prayer for what we have going on. There's a lot happening right now. Lord, you have given perfect peace concerning this. Now, in a lot of times, we reject those things. I know there's some people around me that are kind of pushing back a little bit against that piece, almost like they want the burden. I don't want the burden anymore. I don't want to feel bad anymore. Lord, may that perfect peace befall them. May they cast their burdens upon you. May they call out to you, look to you, wait on you, each one individually, and have that perfect peace of knowing you're going to take care of it, trusting you to take care of these things, and not letting it hold them down or restrain them or weigh them down anymore. You are worthy of our burdens. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of all honor, all glory. You're worthy of our thanksgiving. You're worthy of our love. You are worthy of our burdens. Lord, may we all, every one of us in the brotherhood, bring our burdens to you and then wait on you. And the more, because I'm still learning about this. I'm still learning how this works and what this is. Lord, as we learn more, and I pray we all learn more, as we learn more, May we be more at peace, more joy, and remember to come to you and to tell you about it, to glorify you, to praise you, to give thanks to you, to, to share the fruit of our lips with you concerning all these things and so many more that we don't even know about, some amazing things. You're about to change the whole world here in just a few months. You're about to flip the world completely upside down. And we're on the front row stage of watching it. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't realize that. I'm not going to get into the details now, Lord, but we'll share it later. But you're about to flip the whole world completely upside down. You're about to turn everything around the other direction. And it's amazing. Lord, why, why would we stress over anything, Lord? May we all, and I ask this on behalf of my brothers and sisters, on behalf of our families, on behalf of our friends and neighbors. Lord, why do we all stress? May we never stress. May we bring our burdens to you and may we have that perfect peace and perfect joy for your glory, for our blessing, and to the praise of your holy name, because you are worthy of all things. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Father, thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. I, there are some things I said that were kind of hard that a lot of people may have taken the wrong way. Well, I don't apologize because it's the truth. I cannot apologize for the truth. Examine what I've told you. Go to the Lord and ask him about it. Search the scriptures. You'll find these things are true. And when you finally come to that place where you realize, you know, I don't have to be sad. I don't have to be angry. I don't have to be upset anymore. I don't have to worry or concern myself with things I can't control. I can lay it all on him. I can take it and put it on the ground in front of him. I can let him deal with it. Because that's what he told me to do. It's part of obeying his word. That's what he told me to do, bring his burdens to him. And so may we all do that. Don't let another day go by. Don't let another hour pass where you don't go into prayer and take all of your burdens to the Lord. 
and say, Lord, you show me what to do, whether it's to stand still or whether it's to move. You show me what to do and that I will do. Give me the desire and give me the ability and I will wait on you. And when it's all over, and even before it's over, glorify him, praise him, and thank him. Perfect, simple, easy. And it works. And everybody that is listening to this, that has done that and knows that it works, by all means, share your share your testimony in the comments for people to read. Your testimony mixed with the gospel. Perfect evangelism tool. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.